So I first came on the scene in 1957 and really got to know Ben in 1958. And in 1959, Jeremy and I were married and Ben and Peter came to our wedding. The wedding was at Hoseley and the reception was right on the beach in a restaurant at Shingle Street. And it was lovely having them at our small wedding. And I think they enjoyed it very much too. In 1961, our first son, Simon, was born and Ben, very kindly, said that he would like to be godfather to Simon, which he became with another friend and my sister as godmother. Again, he kindly offered to have the christening party at Red House, where he then lived, of course. And so, in the winter of 1961, we had this lovely christening party in the drawing room at Red House. By 1964, Jeremy and I had two children and we were still living at Red Lodge at the end of Gulf Lane where it joined Layston Road. We were living in a flat which became a little small with two children and so we started to look for a house that was still close enough for Jeremy to be readily available when Ben needed him, which he might do at any time during the day. Ben, again, was most generous and kind and made it possible for us to buy a house in Aldringham, just over the boundary of Marlborough, where we then lived for the next 40 years. Whilst living at the flat, there was one lovely, amusing time. Ben had a great sense of humour and we always loved it if we could make him laugh. The Queen had been officially in Albra on a musical visit and so Ben had got used to driving out and along the roads and people were standing with flags waving at him and the Queen in the car. After she went, Ben said to Jeremy one day, Oh, I really miss not having all those flags and being waved at when I go out. So next time they were about to leave Red House, Jeremy rang me up and I got a flag and I went outside and as they came past, I waved it outside Ben in the car, which made him really chuckle a great deal. Ben loved Alborough and Suffolk. He really didn't like going away. And although he loved cars and driving, he was always sad when he had to spend time sitting in a car on a busy road, getting somewhere. And so one day he came up with a really good idea. If I had a small private airplane, he said to us, then you, Jeremy, could fly me to these concerts and recordings and I could get there very quickly and come home again. So, how about, Jeremy, I send you off to a flying school and you learn to fly? So, that's what happened. And Jeremy went off and learnt how to fly um, a single-engine light aircraft. It was an Oster he was learning on. In due course, he received his private pilot's license and Ben was very excited. Now, now I can buy an aeroplane. I have to work out where we're going to keep it when you can fly me. But unfortunately, none of the legal people or insurance people in Ben's life were very keen on him going up in a single engined aircraft. He, they felt that was probably a step too far and so Ben had to give up the idea and go back to being driven in the car. By 1969, Ben was not very well and he knew that his life was changing and he would not be able to undertake as much in the future as he had done in the past. And he began to worry and to talk about what Jeremy was going to do for a job when he then no longer needed a full-time secretary. We didn't really want to leave Aldborough, which Ben entirely understood and agreed with. Just about a year before that, 
a retired gentleman had started a music shop in Aldborough and he was, as it happened, looking for a partner. Ben discussed this with us and said he was prepared to buy us a partnership in the music shop so that Jeremy would then have some way of continuing to earn the money. So this was started at the end of 1969, the proceedings started. And during those proceedings, sadly, the man selling the business eventually died. And so Ben bought us the entire business and Jeremy and I ran the Aldborough Music Centre for another 17 years. 17 years being an important amount of time because 17 years is the length that Jeremy was Ben's private secretary. Being at the music centre meant, of course, that we were still around Ben. Jeremy recorded all the concerts that were made in the Mortons, house recordings, I seem to remember they were called. And so for quite a long time, he did that. And of course, we went up to Red House. I did a collection of Ben's records shortly before he died. And we continued to see him. I was actually driving home in the car from somewhere when I heard on the news that Ben had died and that was very sad news, very sad news indeed. He was such a kind, generous, caring man, very much missed.